Hi there, this is Linda D'Antonio of Seaporium, located on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. And today we're talking about how we um, painted, um, kind of prepped, painted a, an old bureau that had been previously painted, and it wasn't the nicest paint job. So we had to do some sanding. Sometimes the sanding did not work out so well for us. The paint um, kept kind of expanding rather than feathering off. Um, so one whole side of the bureau, we ended up having to take all the paint off where other parts um, we got, we left a, a lot of paint on the drawers per se. And because for some reason the paint there was allowing us to sand it smooth. Um, we were going to do this piece with a little distress. So our primer, uh, which was Dixie Bell's boss, uh, we started with a clear coat uh, of that, of the clear boss. And then we decided we were gonna do a full out, uh, full, I call it proper finish, where it was just full paint, no distress. And um, so I didn't need to do the clear coat first. I did add some clear, um, the white boss in, over where paint was left on the piece, just to save us a little time with the actual paint, which was the their chalk mineral paint in fluff. And um, we cover, basically sanding um, the prep uh, with the, the cleaning, we didn't really kind of get on video and I did not get the priming. Primer is, like I said, the boss and it paints on like, um, like I do with the paint. So if you follow how I painted the piece, um, it, it'll step you through how to prime it. Um, and I just explained my reasoning on whether I use the, the clear or the white boss. There's a gray boss for dark colors if you prefer. Um, and the boss is good for blocking. It's good for blocking tannins, which was my concern on this piece because we did so much sanding. Um, it also blocks um, the tannins from the, the certain woods in general, um, even if they're sealed, like the um, cherries and mahogany. Sometimes the old oaks like to, um, to, to bleed a little bit. So that's what we're gonna use boss for. Um, there's another primer that you would use if we, it was a slick, um, factory finish or if we had a stone top a glass top but we needed to really have a, a, a primer stick that one is called slick stick by Dixie Bell we didn't need to use that for this project it was just the blocking primer be sure um, that you use glass uh, safety glasses or goggles and gloves especially when you're doing your prep with your cleaners um, and sanding um, and and just um, I didn't cover, like I said, you're gonna start your project with cleaning. I like to use mineral spirits, um, wipe it down really well and let it dry. And then you're gonna clean it. I like to get like a Adobe pad and a little scrub, um, nylon scrubby um, or rag will work, but um, you wipe it you know, down with the Dixie Bell White Lightning. We also have a product called Furniture Clean and Prep by Cottage Paints and um, you can you use that you, you apply it with the with the rag or spray it on however you you have it mixed um, and let it soak in scrub it in well rinse it out really well all right if you have to do multiple rinses with the rag that's that's perfectly expected and then um, especially like in this case with the stain top we went down to bare bare wood and after um, we did our cleaning, we did the sanding. I like to finish off with a wipe of um, like a denatured alcohol, okay? Especially before staining. Um, so clean, sand, clean maybe, um, and it certainly wipe down well. And then prime if needed. Um, if you're gonna do any fixing, you're gonna do that before you prime and make sure you wipe down after. Fixing is um, any scratches, any holes, um, fill them with like a Dixie mud. Uh, we do a little bit of that with um, one of the drawers where, this, where after I got some paint on or the boss on, um, you could see that um, the paint didn't sand smooth even though it felt like it did. So I do uh, show you a little bit on how to do that kind of a repair with, with the Dixie mud, which we love. It's great for the scratches that are on top of your piece if you're painting um, on your drawers. You get those scratches. You know, the, um, wood, the wood filler is not gonna stick in those scratches well. It's just gonna pull right out when you sand. And what's nice about the mud is it has the binders in the plaster, and so it sits in there really well. 
And so after you, know, you get your piece all prepped, it's primed, we're gonna step you through painting it, embellishing it. We're gonna be hiding some um, drawer mess, as I like to call it, um, some sloppy paint work from the previous paint um, that was done on it, the, the dark green. And instead of sanding the inside of the drawers and all that, I just um, dry brush some boss in the white. And then we embellish further to kind of, since we were going to that step anyways, and you have the dry brushing and you have the, the, this variation, we had a, a ink stain come through. We did some stamping on the outside and the inside of the drawers. You don't want to miss that. We use Iron Orchid Design products for that. We also, because the wood knobs would not um, remove easily from the drawer fronts because they were also glued on as well as screwed in, um, instead of risking kind of um, ruining the wood of the drawers, um, we just went with it. We painted the drawers with the knobs on and then we added some molds to the top to kind of give them a little uh, uniqueness and, and so they're not just normal wood knobs. So I hope I, I give you some ideas and inspire you. And if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, please down below, down below there, um, leave your comments and, and or questions and we will get to them. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, um, and we are getting on to um, um, pin Pinterest. Uh, so everything is just slash Seaporium. If you like what you see, please help support uh, our small business and, and like and share and comment. All right. Thank you so much. Make sure you stay tuned for part two because we I kind of talk a lot while I'm painting because I want to make sure that I'm giving you all my little tips and tricks and why I do what I do and, and how I achieve something and, and all that. Um, so the first part, this, this, this video is pretty much all you need to, to um, get the piece painted. Um, part two will cover the embellishments, the wet sanding, and top coating. All right, so you don't want to miss that. We'll see you at the next video. So I have most of the first coat on. I just want to show you um, what we do with the, you know, with the paint. You already have, you know, the idea of the the, the primers that we have. I did kind of block out um, some of the the where the green was. I blocked it with um, white gloss, but um, most everything else had clear gloss. Because originally I was thinking um, I wanted to do um, a distressed look and leave some of the, you know, the wood. And we just had this discussion. We're going to do this one uh, um, kind of the old school, proper finish, full coverage paint. So um, actually I could have done the whole thing in white boss. But, you know, basically on the other side of this dresser, it had a blotch of green that did sand okay, um, that and I didn't have to um, scrape it all off because um, I was really struggling. Um, I was just thinking we would smooth out the paint and um, just give it a coat of gloss and go, right? Um, however, um, sometimes it happens with paints. I'm not, um, I'm not exactly sure what causes it, if it's oil-based paints or what. Um, some of the paints tend to um, not, not like when usually when you sand, it'll feather out and go nice and smooth. Um, this wasn't doing that. A lot of it was just chipping right off. And then where it was sticking, it wasn't sanding smooth on the edges. So um, I guess at some point I could have just said, oh, you know, just sand the whole thing. But um this isn't that piece. This isn't worth taking that extra time to sand everything 
down to wood again. So this is a first coat. So you see, I, I brushed this way and then I quickly brushed down so the paint doesn't set. However, with the Dixie Belle paint, it's really a godsend because if I had a bad brush stroke, all I have to do is maybe when this dries, I can take a wet um, sanding sponge and have like a little bucket of water, right? You take the sanding sponge by Dixie Belle and you just dampen it, just put it in the water, wring it out really good, and you can kind of lightly rub it. And as the water starts to interact with the paint, it's going to um, reactivate the paint and you can get rid of those messy brush strokes, um, any drips, things like that. And then if you do, you know, get back down to wood or whatever, right? And say, oh, it, it's, it, it, um, oops, it sanded off too much. No problem. Even if this was dry, all I have to do is go back over it. The one thing you have to be cautious of with um, chalk or mineral type paints is at some point this is starting to set up a little bit and brushing it more and more is just going to activate what's trying to dry. And so you just want to leave it alone at that point. Okay, I'm just kind of, now I'm going to do up and underneath here and see what's happening is if I get brush strokes, see uh, down here, it's kind of making the finish un, um, kind of unsightly because I like all the brush strokes to go with the grains. And sometimes I've actually seen where the grains don't make sense. Like the grains are always up and down on the sides, but I think I've had it where it went side to side once. What do you do with that? Basically, that's going to be your call if you get one of those pieces. I always... I always do the bureaus up and down because that's generally the way the grain goes. And I can't remember what I had decided to do with that piece where it went against the normal rules of, of grain and paint. Um, but, and then, you know, don't put it on too heavy. Keep your brush wet, um, not soaking wet where it's dripping, um, but I have like a little dip water. I just take the little tips of my brush Right, and then I work it into the paint every now and then. You can have the continuous spray, Mr. Bottle. We'll do that on the second coat. And um, you just want to make sure that when you're doing these trims, take your brush. This is a well used brush, it's starting to get the paint into the ferrule, it's not as tight as it used to be. And trust me, you can use the Dixie Bell. However, all my Dixie Bell brushes are at home because I have projects working at home, so I'm using this brush. It's a well-used brush, but it doesn't bother me because all you want to do is you set down ahead of your trim and then press down so that your top bristles go up against where you need to paint, okay? It's not a big deal. And then I got a little bit because I went over it. We kind of activated and pulled some paint. That's okay. We're going to get that on the second coat. All right, but basically that's it. Oh, I've got some dried paint on there. That's probably my boss, because I was using this this little tray as um, as a um, palette for my boss as well a, a little while ago. Let me grab the drawer, and I'll give you a better idea. Oh, we'll just we'll just move the the um, the camera. All right. I'll move the camera over to the drawer and you'll see here. All right. And let's see. We're going to add a little more paint. This way, when we, we're not dipping into our, our actual can of paint. We're keeping it clean. We're keeping a lot of the dirt out. We're keeping a lot of the parts that dry at the top from drying. All right. And then before I'm done for the night, I like to try to remember to clean the lid too. Because what happens is the paint that's in the lid always ends up going in to the threads of the jar, okay? 
Now, you're gonna say, boy, you did all this prep, Linda, and why didn't you take the handles off? Um, that's because they don't come off. They do, but they're glued on, uh, um, evidently. So you can see here, I had green here. This all sanded down really nicely. And so this has, I coated everything with the clear boss. This is the white boss over where the green used to be. And you notice I took the drawers and I gave it a messy paint job on the inside because um, it, it was a kind of a hot mess. The green kind of got here and there willy-nilly. There was some marks on it. And so we're gonna go with a rustic theme inside and we're gonna um, stamp it and give it a cool look. We're gonna, um, we're gonna give the, the sides of the drawers um, a neat little look. I can't decide if I'm gonna stamp them or if I'm gonna stripe them or both. But it's gonna be interesting with the drawer. And again, remember, I was doing this because I was gonna leave some distress. That changed, so I didn't need to do part if I, you know, if I wanted the, the distressed look, one of the ways to save myself some time is to not cover all the brown, especially on the first coat. I might, I might leave it like that, okay? If I was doing distress. And then that gives me room on the second coat, right? This is, let's say this is the second coat. Now I can go over and blend it out some more or whatever and it, I, have, I don't have as much sanding to do. That's just a little trick, okay? But again, like I said, we decided that um, we're going full coverage. So, you know, all good plans. Meant well, right? And I'm just going full strokes as much as I can. And before the paint dries, like I said, we don't want the paint to dry too much because we're going against the grain here, right? We're gonna go all willy-nilly with the knob. And then we wanna make sure we kind of write all that and go with the grain again. Nice long strokes as best as you can. I just didn't wanna pull this knob off and find that it tore off a lot of the um, wood that, uh, you know, there's obviously it's glued on there pretty well. I tried yanking it, you know, without really forcing it. Um, I would have had to get a spatula or something underneath a little crowbar, whatever. Um, I would have been pulling some wood and having to do some wood filler. And so this was my easier option. But typically, you know, you just get a screwdriver to the back here, unscrew it, and this just comes off. Um, that was not the case. Oh, I see some paint didn't get covered here. Let's do our best. Doesn't have to be perfect. And if you hear some little huffing and puffing, we do have shop dogs. We are open. So my husband's going in and out. He's got outdoor project going on. Um, and if you're ever around in Cape Cod, please come see us. You might catch me working, especially if it's in the summer. Um, and then see, we're just gonna pull this paint. And I'm not going full full coverage on this. To me, this is just um, kind of a bonus thing. I'm not sanding this smooth. If this was a nice finish on here, I could have done a full coverage. I don't want to put a thick coat of paint on here because don't remember, it's got to fit. Don't forget, I mean, it's got to fit into the, um, don't remember. It's, <laughs> it's got to fit into the drawers and you don't want it to stick, okay? I see some more paint here on this knob. It needs to get covered. When it's dry, I can try and get in here better. And if I get a mess onto the dry portion of the drawer front, I can wipe that off lightly which is what I might do. Okay, so you gotta be careful that we're not, you know, messing up the wood. But like I was saying, this is not a nice finished wood. It's kind of a rough sawn. So I think that's good. I want it on thin. I'm not gonna put another coat on this side at all. 
Okay, I'm actually gonna sand the top of this down when I'm all said and done. And then I put like um, soap and I rub it along there or a little um, candle perhaps and rub it along there and along the bottom. So that always stays free. Um, anywhere where the drawer could stick. So like behind here and behind here, when it's all said and done after top coat and everything, that will get a little um, coat of, of wax or, or soap. All right. And for right now, we're gonna do this in stages. Okay, just kind of go over, make sure we don't have any drips. Okay, and again, if you have big brush strokes, you can, you can sand them down. However, if I had big, big brush strokes with my gloss, that's another story. We would have to sand it down a little more aggressively. It might not be just a wet sand. We'd have to might get some sandpaper. Um, and a lot of times, you know, for a wet sand, like you saw, all you need is a rag, maybe a dobe cloth, maybe the finishing pad that, um, that you know, from Dixie Bell, most stockists should have. We, we usually have it in stock. And, um, you know, that wet is enough to kind of smooth things out. But we'll go over the sanding part later in this video. I'm gonna keep working on the drawers, do what I can. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the inside the boss. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me to paint that over again when it's all said and done fluff looks close enough to boss and it's going to be close in here all right and again i'm not going for full coverage oops i see i got grip on my rug so lightly i see where the brush kind of got on here so if we're doing that let's just try and get under there again all right See how we do that? And then you just go over lightly. But don't worry about it. If you go back down to wood, whether it was the boss coat, whether it was your first chalk paint coat, you can go over this. It's not like a latex. And this is why I love chalk paints. Um, it's so matte that you can go and do fixes and it's not gonna be as obvious like it is with a latex. There's no sheen to a chalk paint. Anytime you get any kind of sheen is where you get problems. That's where you see your fixes. That's where it becomes a problem. All right. found a little blemish here where the sanding did not totally smooth out. It's a raised little edge. Truth be told, I've already started a little bit. This is basically Dixie Mud. I can't lie. I have a problem. I can't lie. It's the same thing though, okay? Um, it's another brand. It's the same thing. It's a plaster with a binder in it, and you're going to use like a little putty knife. You know, you don't need to use a real large one, but if you had a large area you were trying to fill, you would want a larger putty knife, okay? They come in different sizes. You can use a plastic one. Um, just, just all kinds of different ways you can do this. A credit card would probably work. You might have to sand it more. And, and basically it's around this knob and it's just a little raised area and I'm just going to put this down and it's getting a little dry so I will be opening up a Dixie Mud soon. Um, and you're just gonna put it on very thin and pull it out. 
you'd rather put on more coats than try to get everything filled, especially if it's a deeper gouge. Just put on thinner coats and really pull it thin. And what this is gonna do is that little raised edge, this is really gonna make that disappear. This is gonna eat up some of that difference in height, the different thicknesses, right? From the paint down to the wood. Um, it's gonna bind to the surface because the product does have binders to it. This stuff is awesome. Dixie Mud is the bomb. You're gonna wanna use it for all your nail holes, any gouges in furniture. If you're gonna paint the top of your, of your pieces, just tack it, y'all. Just tack it, fill it with the Dixie Mud, give it a light sand, and I'm telling you, if it, if, you know, you won't want to do it with stain, but certainly, certainly do it with painted surfaces. It comes in black and white and um, brown. So if you're doing a brown, you know, if you're doing wood, if you're doing like a walnut color, I'll bet you could use the mud for a little fill. You wouldn't want to use it for a long stretch, especially if it's going counter um, grain wise. But if it's, you know, a thin scratch going with the grain and you were staining it, I would probably do that. I might probably try that one. We're going to keep watching my videos and we'll probably get to something. I'm going to try that. So, um, but anyways, Dixie Mud, if you're painting, um, Dixie Mud is also great for the raised stenciling, which we will do at some point. It is also great for um, the purpose of this. You have some sort of uneven surface. And don't even try the wood filler. It will not stick when you go to try and sand it smooth. It just won't, trust me. It has to be a deep enough gouge for the wood filler to fill and it'll shrink and it'll end up cracking and cracking away down the road. So the Dixie Mud's gonna hold up. All right, I'll see you at the next step. paper that the chalk paint um, will just gather up in the sanding uh, the granules and it'll block it all up and you're going to go through a ton of uh, sanding paper. So the sponge you can wring it out get the chalk out and keep using it. Plus it activates the, the paint because it's a chalk style paint this one will end up curing. Most will remain um, water reactive until you seal it. Um, I still suggest that you top coat their paint. The white, it really won't matter if it's any kind of color. Anytime you rub a finger up along, you move your piece of furniture, it's going to leave like a chalky, um, like a streak mark. Um, because it's just so chalky. Even though it's, you know, it's because it's sealed. Um, but I, I gave it through the test and I didn't like what was happening with the finish. Um, when you, you know, when you touch it, so I like to seal it, even though it says, you know, the, the chalk mineral paint does seal. So basically, the more wet you, you do this as, the more you activate it. If you want to do a distress, that's how you do that. Um, it, but like I said, we do have this dark spot here, because remember I was going to distress it. And if I was going to distress it, I would be sand concentrating my sanding here with not so wet of a sandpaper and just sort of kind of burnish away the paint until it looks worn out. Um, but this isn't going to be that project, okay? This is going to be a finished project. And so since I had, you know, some brush strokes that we could get, we could get rid of, I want to show you how we do a wet sand. And I'm going to put on another coat. You don't have to do that at this point. But since I had already pulled it out for the other side, because I already had from, you know, the, the video mishap from before, I had um, the um, kind of a buildup of paint on the other side. And I didn't want to add to it and make my sanding job harder before I have to seal it. Okay.